we are an organization of, by, and for entrepreneurs. This is critical because at times, you know, there are conflicts between and among entrepreneurs and their investors, entrepreneurs and their, you know, co-founders, entrepreneurs and their board members. And we always focus on the entrepreneur first. And that is unique. And in turn, many of our entrepreneurs end up joining the boards of, of Endeavor. The second is this network of trust. We won't sign non-disclosure agreements. We think that's one of the problems that Route 128 in Boston had is they had all these non-competes and non-disclosure agreements versus Silicon Valley. It was like, oh, you're leaving? What's your next venture? I'll fund you. So we feel it's our responsibility to have, but you have to have trust then. And if people violate the trust, they have to be, you know, excised from the network. But we've done that. And then the other thing is this pay it forward spirit. And what we've said is we're investing in very few people to have that force multiplier effect. And so it's this sense that we are of, by, and for entrepreneurs. And it's their responsibility as entrepreneurs to spend time mentoring, to spend time reinvesting, to become those founder to funders. When we shut down, uh, we immediately started uh, an Endeavor webinar series called Leading Through Crisis. Uh, and we were the lone optimists at that point. And I'd say it, at that point, all the VCs said, hoard your money, don't spend a dime, you're never raising again. And, and we thought, you're insane. This is like the best moment to be an entrepreneur. And I reminded everyone, my mantra, apart from the crazy as a compliment, my other mantra is that when economies turn down, entrepreneurs turn up. And that is, of course, what happened. And what we saw is that tech-enabled solutions really were, were more needed than ever. So we would have you know, digital transformation companies skyrocketing, ed tech platforms, health tech platforms. Imagine you know, what would have happened pre-Zoom. I mean, just everyone was finding solutions. We had coffee shops opening in Indonesia with tech-enabled solutions. We had, as I mentioned, with Flutterwave, in every you know, country, people finding fintech options to actually create opportunities for lots of mom and pop shops to build digital storefronts. And now, guess what? Those digital storefronts are, are, are thriving. If there's some real pain point or some real opportunity that's come from your own life, it, the likelihood that you're gonna feel the need to keep going when times get tough is, is, is more likely. And so that's what I look like. It's when everything's going well, when people are, you know, getting thrown venture capital, that's the easy point. At some point it is going to get difficult. And I want to know what's going to make this founder stick with this idea. And if there's something in the, the DNA of the entrepreneur and the, the, the idea itself um, that will make them, you know, feel compelled to keep going, um, then, then I'm going to back that, that founder. I think now people are worried about the big four, the big five having too much power. But, you know, remember, IBM was in that situation way back when. So I think that if Google and if, you know, Microsoft and Apple and Facebook and Alibaba aren't careful, you know, they're, they're going to be, you know, disrupted themselves. And even, you know, look at, look at what Facebook did. It tried to buy up all of the competitors, right? It tried to, it bought up Instagram, it bought up WhatsApp. So what's happening? So then you have Snap and you have Clubhouse and you have all of these and you have um, Signal and you have all of these other now competitors coming. So I, I, I believe in competition. I believe in agility. I think it's really hard, even for the, com the storied companies that started out um, as the most dynamic, at some point, they too become the old behemoths, you know? And you look at Amazon, look at now what Spotify is doing. And Spotify said, hey, we're going to be on the side of the business customer. We're the B2B savior, you know, uh, clients. Amazon only cares about the end users. We care about you, the businesses. So Spotify is taking on Amazon. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer disruption is possible. It's always a good time to be an entrepreneur. Don't worry about the entrenched leaders. Just, just do your thing. So first, I would say, take care of yourself be less super more human, but also today, people want that relatability. People are having their own struggles as, and, and seeing leaders who have that empathy while having 
that passion and that vision to move forward, if you can marry that, I think those are the types of leaders who are going to, um, to, to thrive ahead. It's no longer the militaristic, you know, <laughs> at, you know, just at all costs, you know, don't talk to me about personal issues and just don't talk about anything about, about, about work. I think those days are over. And this gets back to the last question about marrying cultures too. You know, if, if you want to create a world-class company today and it's remote, you've got to be able to attract talent from anywhere, meaning you really have to be sensitive to different cultures and have that open spirit of dialogue and discussion.